If you want these rules, check them in the description down below. Let's see them in action. Let's find out how we can start using Cursor AI in a more effective manner when we code with it. By the end of today's video, we're gonna unlock together a very special tool found within Cursor AI. This tool is kind of hidden, so it's good we're doing this video together because this is gonna allow for better code outputs, better structuring, you know, better everything when it comes to application development when using Cursor AI. Sound good? Let's jump in. So if you know me, you already know when I talk about coding of AI, a very important part is custom instructions. If you don't know what custom instructions are, what it allows us to do is give a ton of context to our artificial intelligence models before we even ask for code. I've created videos discussing this topic for this exact type of workflow in chat GBT, but let's also add this kind of workflow within Cursor AI. To do so, all we need to do is come up here to our little nav bar here, go and hover over Cursor, hit settings, and go to Cursor settings. Click. Once we're in Cursor settings here, we're gonna scroll down, and there we go. It's rules for AI. This is pretty cool. This is gonna allow us to basically be like, hey, don't give us some crazy code outputs, follow some directions, and give me some good code. Therefore, let's create some instructions together. And from this video, you'll be able to create your own instructions. Sound good? I'm gonna go and paste mine over. So first major thing that you need to identify is that this type of rules for AI is gonna be a global type of setting. E.g., if you have multiple projects within Cursor AI, this will apply to it. Number two, if you don't wanna actually use the rules that you create, maybe in a very specific project, you don't wanna use them, you scroll down here, Simply hit this little boolean here or the slider, turn it off, it's not using them. Let's go and walk through these rules I've created, explain why, and then show it in a real life demo. So first things first, when using rules for AI, we're gonna identify what kind of stack we're using. When I reference stack, I mean like, what are we using language wise? What are we using framework wise? What are we just using to build out this app? So in this context, I plan on wrapping up a series I did earlier this year when I was creating an entire landing page for my business. So I plan on wrapping that up in Cursor AI. So you can go ahead and check that out if you want to. But in this context, we'll use JavaScript, React, Firebase, and Python. Think of the first sentence as the ultimate context. I've identified web development. I've identified these specific languages that I care about. You do the same. Next, I'm going over code style and structure. A lot of this is just for good practice. For example, I have described this in the past. So this is very important. When describing variable names or when outputting variable names in code, sometimes it can be too general. It can be like, is button clicked? button is clicked, like what is what is the button? What are we clicking? Therefore, something like this solves for it. Descriptive variable names. Use verbs or clear naming conventions to represent state or actions, e.g. is authenticated, fetch user data. Also, I'm realizing that some of y'all might actually want my rules. So what I'm gonna do is actually copy my entire rule book here, paste it into a Google Doc, check it out in the description down below. You can paste it yourself if you wanna use my rules. And if you found value up to this point, leave a like, it's free. Is it free, Corbin? It's free. My specific use case when it comes to using rules for AI is very specific to structuring and naming. As when I code with AI, I think the biggest hinder that I've noticed is very much not personalization for specific actions and functions, which can get very confusing when you're dealing with multiple files. Therefore, using rules AI, we can follow best practices. Here's another example. Components. What is a component? Let's say we have a parent-child type of component here. So let's say we have a homepage.js which will render most of the homepage of that website. And then the components within it, which we'll call child, is going to be like the footer, the CTA, the above the fold section. If you want more clarity on that, go and check out that video right there. I'll show you in 10 minutes on how to properly structure an entire cursor AI repository or folder or files, whatever you want to call it. So in this context, use Pascal case for React component file names, such as user profile, nav bar. You know, you can see right here, UP capitalized nav bar capitalized. If you want these rules, check them in the description down below. Let's see them in action. Coming over to our code here, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this section here. I'm going to command K, and this is where it's going to be referencing our rules. Right now, I have a button, and this button does nothing. Right here, it says button. Let's find out. So the rule I'm going to ask here, or the request, is going to be, okay, when I click the button, have it turn blue, and say we have found out about rules in Cursor AI. What I expect to see here, if I didn't have the rules, was the variable state would be is button clicked, set is button clicked. Like it's gonna be general. But because I set the rules here, I expect to see some specification within that variable. Let's find out, submit edit. There we go. Is blue, set is blue. Notice how that is very specific to the event of a click incurring with that button. Now to be clear, the handle click, that probably could be a little bit more specific to maybe a handle click on this specific button, but that's kind of the idea here. Obviously I could just go in here and be like handle blue click if I chose to do so. And then that solves that situation. But the idea is that these rules are supposed to expedite 
specific things that you have issues with with bad code outputs. That does today's video. If you want to see a ton of other videos on Cursor AI, how to deploy an application with a live website link, how to code correctly with Cursor AI, you can check out a bunch of other videos on my channel here. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. These videos are random, but they were chosen for you. So are they good? Are they not so good? I'll see you in the next video.